Well, why don't you put your hands together for the Lord if you love him? Come on, if you love my Savior, why don't you put your hands together and give him the praise that is befitting of a celebratory service. Come on, we trust him, we believed him. We put our faith in him and he has never let us down. I don't care what the song said, he has never let us down. It's not he didn't fail us yet. He's not ever going to fail us, nor has he failed us. We give him praise. Now, you know what? I, I, I want to tell you, some of you who are here who do not know me from Adam. I want to talk to you today. Um, I, I don't need to come into the house of God and get warmed up to praise him. I, I, I don't need to come into the house of God and, and, and just, you know, stick me in the oven and I'll gradually rise. Because my worship didn't start when I got to the house of God. My worship started when he woke me up this morning. Because prior to that, I was laying in the image of death. And I know only one person that has the power to wake me up and everybody else he has to wake up on time. Now, I'm just asking the woke folk that is in the sanctuary today to wake up, hallelujah, somebody around you who is not woke up. And I need you to sound the alarm. I need you to be the alarm clock. I need you to wake somebody up around you with your praise because you know who I'm talking about. You know the one that kept you. You know the one that raised you. You know the one that saved you. Somebody sound the alarm. I got to wake up my robe. Now, for those of us who would rather uh, me not shout it, uh, I, I want you uh, somebody around you to tell them um, it's anniversary time. We got to wake up. We got to wake up. We got to wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we chose to come to this service in the morning. Hallelujah. We chose this service. So that's a sacrifice on our part. And now that we've done the right thing by sacrificing, we now release it unto God and give him praise and give him glory. Because guess what? We know we're in the right place at the right time. All right. I, that was just a test. I just wanted to see whether y'all was ready to have church this early in the morning. All right, all right. We'll, 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 we'll get back to that in a moment. But allow, allow me uh, to pay uh, strong deference to uh, the angel of this house. The bishop of this house. Come on, celebrate like you know he's aristocracy. T -t 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 to celebrate like you know how great and how wonderful your man of God is, our man of God. Can we celebrate? Because I'm a family member, that's all. You just, I'm your little cousin, I'm your little nephew, I'm your little grandchild. I know I'm just a family member. But praise God for this angel of a man of God, this mountain of a man. And could you do me a favor? Because you can't celebrate him without celebrating the one that keeps him smiling. Let's celebrate Lady Reed. 
She is the Duchess. <laughs> she is a queen in her own right, and we celebrate them, and the two shall become one. And they got some rug rats. <laughs> my nephew, <laughs> hallelujah, my nephew. Listen, um, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm just grateful to be a family member at this juncture, you know. Look at somebody and say, it's just great to be connected. It's great to be connected. I want to celebrate that awesome praise and worship leader. I want to celebrate this awesome male. Look, at I cannot. I'm like, they messed my sermon up. Come on, can we celebrate men? Hallelujah. Working for the Lord, serving the Lord with gladness. Amen. Hallelujah. It is a blessing to be here. And I want to also um, celebrate my mother who is here with me today. She's right here. Wave your hand, Mama. Thank you. And those that are from our tribe, uh, MHBC, uh, I want to say to you, thank you for joining us here. Can you celebrate those that are here from MHBC? Mount Hermon, we love you. Thank you so much for your support and everything. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And that is the major moment right there for me because I get to now celebrate you, the people of God. I get, yeah, he saved the best for last. I get to celebrate you, the people of God. Now, I'm going to need you to help me do that because I'm but one person. So somebody around you, look at the person around you and tell them, I celebrate you. Yeah, yeah. After all that you went through, after all that you had to deal with, after all that you had to endure, I celebrate you. Heck, it's hard work being saved. I celebrate you. And you made it to the house of God this morning. Hallelujah. And God is not going to disappoint you today. He's not going to disappoint you today. I, 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 I want each and every one of you to my fellow uh, brothers and sisters of the cloth, wherever you may be scattered abroad in this monstrositous sanctuary. I want you to understand that I appreciate those that serve in the kingdom of God. And this is anniversary and we must be clear that this is a time that we celebrate one another because God has brought us through these many years. Now, I heard some of y'all shouting about what year it was. I just want you to know, I heard, see, that, that I, I, I'm a good little brother, and I, I, I don't like confusion. So what year is it that we celebrating? 89. We celebrating 89? Look at somebody and say, that's a long time. That's a long time, which means we can ill afford to waste time bickering with one another. Yep. That means as a body, those that are connected with Christ, believers, we have to understand that we must Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Now, if you're wondering if I'm preaching now, the answer is yes. Say it loud for the people in the back. 
I am preaching. I, I, but, but God, more so than me preaching, is saying something to you. And he chose this grand affair that would bring you to church, to bring us all here together as one body in Christ. He came to say something to us this morning. You are in the sanctuary of the Lord in reality. But in all spirituality, you are at the table of the Lord. Do me a favor. Um, this, is, this is a part of protocol at the dinner table. Uh, greet one another and tell them, welcome to the table. Welcome to the table. You're at the table. Sharon is a table. It's a big table, but it's a table. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mount Hermon is a table. Hallelujah. It's, it's a table. It's a table. Welcome to the table. Every person has a seat. And every person is a table. Because we understand that we are to let our light so shine. That means people should be able to see. See your table. They may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Now, with that in mind, I want to direct you to our scripture text today. Greeters, ushers, servants of the Lord, I honor you all. Galatians 6. Chapter number six, verse number nine. Now, I might as well tell you. I'm going to give you a good three breaths. And we're going to be on our way. Now, all I need y'all to do is let me know that you're with me and help me breathe. All right, <laughs> help me breathe, and uh, we'll have breakfast. <laughs> Thank you. The scripture text, if you don't have the words, I'm sure there are more Christians around you that will be able to direct your attention to it in great Christian fashion. Galatians 6, verse number 9. Very familiar and appeasing text to the senses of the spirit. It says, and let us not be weary in well For in due season, somebody say due season, we shall reap if, 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 if we faint. Father, your word stands by itself. As a matter of fact, we're knowledge, knowledgeable of the fact that heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or one tittle of your word falls. So, Lord, we know we are secure in you. And I guess that's as it should be because we are your children. So now we ask that you will pour out on our minds, unload on us, bring us to a place where we're lifted, we're lifted above all 
that would come against us. Saturate these thy spices of the earth, the salt of the earth. I pray right now that you would sprinkle upon their minds now the correct way, the right way. Do it for your glory. And after we leave, shall have left this place, God, I pray right now that you would help us to witness to somebody else just how good you are and how good you have been over 89 years. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. While you take your seat, I want to speak from a subject entitled, I'm looking forward to another season. I'm looking forward to another season. Tell somebody if that's your testimony today, I'm looking forward to another season. If it's greater, so if it's a greater season that you're looking forward to, tell them, witness, witness to them and tell them, I'm looking forward to another season. Of course, the season that I'm looking forward to is not a bad one. I just want to do a house check right here. It's not a bad one. I'm looking forward to a, another good season. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to another good season. Are, are we on the same page? I'm looking forward to another good season. And um, um, I, I, I am blessed, and I do not stand here um, to uh, honor myself, but I know uh, that Jesus taught us in human flesh it's a good thing to give honor to the Father. It, 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 it's a good thing to give honor to the Father. And we've honored Father Reed uh, uh, and allow me to honor my uh, spiritual father, Bishop Larry Darnell Trotter. Um, I honor him. Can you put your hands together <laughs> for him? I'm in platforms like this because of him and my connection and what he has instilled in me. And I am grateful for all of the fathers that have had um, great impressions on my life. But as we deal with this particular text here today, ladies and gentlemen, we must look at it from a perspective of how my father taught me to look at my father taught me to look at things in a certain way. I've watched him move in the kingdom. I've watched him go here, there, and everywhere. I've, I've sat in rooms with him by ourselves. We drove uh, distances by ourselves. I had time with my father. And, and, and I want to tell and encourage somebody right about through here that maybe you may need to consider spending more time with your father. I just want you to, and, that, and that's to whoever it applies to, it, it, to whoever it applies to, maybe you need to start spending a little bit more time with your father. Because with your father, you will learn things about the kingdom. You will learn things about life. You will learn things in areas and directions that you would go to have success in life if you listen to your father. I believe it was Proverbs that admonishes and, 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 and directed us to esteem your father highly. It, it's Proverbs that would tell us that we should honor uh, and, and obey the instructions of your father. And, and, and every now and again, we need to do a, a, a family checkpoint. We need to check uh, our family pulse to see if we're family, if we're actually honoring the Father. Are you honoring the Father today? And, and I want you uh, to understand that if you are honoring the Father, that means you're going to give him what it is that he asked for. Amen? And the Father, just so you know, the father that I'm talking about is God. 
We have to honor God. Now, don't worry. This is anniversary time, and this is just a checkpoint because we got to check here, and then we'll go higher. Is that all right? So, 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 so we honor God. So now we have to listen and, and see what he is directing us and how he is directing us in the kingdom. We have to look at that. And when we sit down with the Father, when we spend time with the Father, we'll learn some things that is going on. They are called insights. God will give us insight. Somebody say insight. And then look at another person and say, you really need that. You need insight. You need insight. Yeah, you need insight. You need insight because God will then show you people around you that you weren't able to pick up on innately by yourself. See, the more you spend time with God, the more his spirit enters into you. Look at somebody and say, I just don't want to be uh, on E. I want to be full. I want to be full of the spirit. I, I want to be full of the spirit because I, I already know I'm washed in his blood. I know, hallelujah, that, that, that I got a story. I understand. But what I want is a closer walk with thee. Is anybody interested in a closer walk with thee? You ain't got to be shy about it. Go ahead, give it to them. I'm interested in a closer walk with thee. And now I have to then put my hands together because of I understand that praise is comely to the upright. And whenever I'm giving them praise, it needs to be accompanied with something else. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy of not just some of the praise, but he's worthy of all of the praise. So, so. When we spend time with God, we pick up on things uh, uh, because he, he, we're connected with him. And it's a wonderful thing uh, to be connect with, connected to God because that means we are able to have some benefits. Look at somebody say, some benefits. Yeah, we, our connectedness to God gives us benefits. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are uh, connected to God. And we benefit because we belong to him simply because we know it because he changed our walk. Can I get a witness? He ordered our steps. Can I get a witness? And I believe that there are some things that because of that connection, we can be assured of. Are y'all hearing me? We can be assured of some things. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, we no longer live like we don't have any guarantees. We are people who live according to the word of God. And ladies and gentlemen, when you live by the word of God, let me help you, ma'am. Let me help you, sirs. When you live by the word of God, there are guarantees, my friends. There are guarantees that we have in this life, dear ones. There are guarantees that we have. We have guarantees like the assurance of answered prayer. Can I get a witness? We have the guarantees of uh, 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 having power over the devil and scorpions and serpents and over all of the power of the enemy. Look at somebody and say, there are some guarantees. There are some benefits to this thing. We are guaranteed that, that, that we, we, we stand on the power of God. We are guaranteed that we will not see death again. We are guaranteed that uh, 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 we, we know the benefits of living the uh, victorious life. We are guaranteed that we know that there is a higher height and a deeper depth. We, we, we are guaranteed that we know that when we leave this earth, ladies and gentlemen, we have another home that's not made with hands. We are guaranteed that we are blessed to speak in heavenly languages. We know we have some guarantees that we, 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 we do lay hands on the sick and they recover. We have a guarantee in the word of God that when we're connected to him, we can speak things that were not as though 
they were. Now, that's a good place to pause because God wanted you to come to anniversary and he woke you up this morning so that you can get here and you did your part. You pressed your way here. God wanted me to tell you this is the moment, happy anniversary, that you get to speak to your situation right now. Now, I want us to take a pause right now. I want you to, be, to just do it. I don't want you to just clap your hands. I want you to speak, hallelujah, things that are not as though they were. If anything is going wrong in your house, I dare you to speak. Y'all ain't catch on yet. This is anniversary time. This is the time to say what's on your mind. If God, hallelujah, said that he's going to give you power over all of that, speak it right now. Speak your success into existence. Speak more money into your pocket in existence. Oh, my God. Speak your health up. Hallelujah. Speak high blood pressure down. Speak, hallelujah, that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. I, 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 I need you to understand that, 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 that this is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. Hallelujah. We are in need of a move of God like never before. That's why I'm looking forward to another season. I, 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 if, if this season was all that there were, it would end on a sour note. If this where we are, If this is what I had to look forward to, I don't know who I'm talking to, God. It would end on a sour note. But you better declare it, speak it like God's word said that you are supposed to speak it. Speak it like you know you would like to see it. Speak it like you know you would like to see it. Speak it like you know you would like to see it. Don't even say it in your mind. Get bold with that thing and say it out loud. I'm speaking things that are not as though they were. I got my healing. I got my deliverance. I got what I need from God. And what I need with another celebration for these 89 years is I need to connect with God like never before. I need to go to that higher plane that we sing about. I need to go to another level in him. And I'm not talking uh, to just anybody in here. I'm talking to the people that this resonates with. I'm talking uh, to everybody that is uh, uh, uniquely aligned in the kingdom for greater works. I'm talking uh, to some people who are ready to go to the next level in their Christianity and in their humanity. You ready to go into another level because there are other planes and other dimensions that God wants to take you to. God says, I'm not even studying how old you are because I'm used to using old folk. God said, I don't care nothing about how young you are. I already said long time ago, a child will lead them. Hallelujah. I, 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 I want you to understand, hallelujah, that, that I, I started with children because for unto us a child uh, was born, unto us a son was given, and the government, see, that was weight that was on his ministry. That was anointing that he needed for, to have for the particular moment. I need to tell everybody under the sound of my voice that can hear me in the spirit, I'm here to tell you that God wants you to know that he has a greater anointing anointing for you. And for those of you who seem like that's Chinese to you, that means he's going to give you more strength, more grace, more opportunity, more chances, more time with him, more of his glory is going to be shown around you. God is going to, what you tell me, tell the person next to you, God is getting ready to use you. Yeah, 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 he's getting ready to use you. We, we, but we have to be careful. Because if this was the only season, this is, this, is, this is where this thing ended, it would have been 
a mess with, 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 with gas prices going up. And that politician, I won't say his name, acting the fool. If this was all, big bro, we, we, have to, we have to look forward to, it would be a sour note. It would be a sour note, to, hallelujah, because and we can see it. it it's, it's like manifesting itself around us. Ah, you've seen it. We, 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 we don't love God like we once did. We, 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 we are more interested in earthly interests and occupation and uh, uh, more important than eternal ones. We don't think they're on the same level. We don't think they're more important. Uh, we, we rather watch TV and read magazines and Get on Facebook and Instagram and all of the various platforms that we have. We rather play video games, those of our gamers that are represented in Sharon Baptist Church. We play more video games than we ever open up our Bibles. Church dinners and Church banquets and concerts and quartet programs are, 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 are better attended than prayer meeting and Bible study. We, we, we have little or no power or no hardly any desire for an anointing. We would rather make money than give money. We, 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 we will put people in leadership positions that don't meet spiritual qualification. We, 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 uh, we, uh, our, our Christianity is, is boring. Our, 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 our being like lacks passion for the things of God. We, we, we know the truths in our heads, but we don't live it by our example of life. We make little to no effort to witness to the lost. Happy anniversary. Somebody tell the person next to you, I'm looking forward to another feast. We have time, more time we'll carve out for sports, more time for recreation. Soccer moms, soccer dads, you know what I'm talking about. We no longer tremble at the word of God. Our preaching even lacks conviction. Confrontation and divine fire has become an ancient tale. We seldom think, think thoughts or talk about eternity. God's people are more concerned about their jobs. They're more concerned about their careers and their prosperity, prosperity, uh, prosperity. That they are about the 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 they 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 don't want to think about the kingdom of God as much as they want to think about themselves. So they think prosperity talk, thoughts. They think about prospering. It's like they received a drug that they can't 
break. They can't shake. They're drawn to it. Prosperity. It's a difference when it's drawn to you than you drawn to it. The Bible tells us that the love of money is the root of all evil. So that's why we know the blessed ones got it. Um, because obviously they're religious. Y'all, y'all get it later. <laughs> it is anniversary time. You gotta know we're gonna be laughing at the table. Hallelujah. Uh-uh. There, 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 there is a mindset that we must have. We need another season. I put together discussions about everything about the weather, about sports, about our hobbies, but we never, ever, 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 ever seem to come around to talking about the goodness of the Lord. Our churches and our church services are predictable. It's business as usual. There's no relevance on the power of the Holy Spirit. Believers can be at odds with one another and not feel compelled to pursue reconciliation nor forgiveness. Our marriages are coexisting rather than being full of love and compassion for one another. Our children are growing up watching television and the television has consequently become their parent. Because we got TVs in the rooms now. We used to, back in the day, come out the TV, come out the rooms and watch TV, one TV together. Y'all remember? Come on, let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. We used to come out the rooms and come together. Oh, well, that's what it's like when we come to church, right? We ain't doing nothing but coming together. I feel at home because we're together. I, 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 we, 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 we rather huh, not confront the issue. Our churches never preach on sin anymore. My Lord, sin is swept under the rug. Lumps in the carpet are evidence that something is there. And even more egregious is something that is there that you refuse to get up. Because to know it's there is one thing, but to keep it there is another. Sin is not dealt with in the pulpit through the biblical process of discipline and restoration. You can hardly hear ever preaching of the cross. They don't do that anymore. You can watch Christian television all day and hear nothing about the blood or the cross. And for some of y'all trying to figure me out, yes, I'm old school. I'm old school. I'm one of them that believe that the blood still works. I'm one of them that believe, like the hymn said, Franny Drake Cosby said, it was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And my burdens, I wish I had one witness, rolled away. It was, it was there by faith. I received my sight. and. And now I am happy all the day. See, y'all, 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 y'all know that verse, but but the one that hit hard for me was it was not for crimes that I had done. Oh my God. 
He, 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 he hung upon the tree. Amazing pity. Grace unknown. And love beyond degree. Then I lean back on that thing and say it was at the cross. My Savior at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart. I thought y'all knew it. Y'all going to leave me out there by myself. This ain't nothing but a praise party. This anniversary. Y'all know the word. Y'all know the words. It was there by faith. I received my sight. Shout at somebody and say, now I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, we got to look forward to another season. And if this season was on, it would stay on this note, it would be really, 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 really bad. Well, it would be really bad. We, we will watch things on TV and movies that are not holy and certainly not edifying. Our singing is half-hearted. We halfway lift our hands while in church. Our lifestyles have little to no worship in it. Our prayers are empty words that are merely used to impress others. Our hearts are cold. Our eyes are intensely lubricated. We need another season to look forward to that speaks to these situations because we are not seeing regular evidence of the super pat supernatural power of God. We come to church and get bored in worship. People have to entertain us to draw us to a particular uh, time of participating in church. Our music and our dress patterns are after the world. Look at somebody and say, did you hear what he said? Our dress patterns are after the world. We, 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 we start fitting in and adapting to the world instead of the world adapting to the church and to the standard of holiness in God. We don't long for fellowship. We no longer want to taste that sweet communion. Sweetness of coming together. We, we no longer long for the company and the warmth that each light of God brings to an assembly. People have to entertain us to bring us in. We don't long for the presence of God. People have to be begged to give and paid to serve. We aren't seeing lost people being drawn to Jesus on a regular basis. We aren't exercising faith and we don't believe God for the impossible, the I'm possible God. We are concerned more about our four and no more. We've hardly contemplated the fact that there are more than two and a half billion people that have never heard the name Jesus. We're unmoved by the thoughts 
of our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends, our families, our associates and acquaintances. We are lost and without Christ. You've been in church for these moments and some of us have still not moved in praise to God yet. My father would say, your, 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 your fire is going out. He says, son, your, 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 your wood is wet. Son, your, 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 your wax has gotten cold. He says, son, tra 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 transmission doesn't sprung awry. You dried up. Then he says, I got good news for you. This is the new season. Because what you are looking forward to is something that is something you are supposed to have. God says, this is your season. He says, and let us not be weary. Very softly. In well-doing. For in due season. Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. In due season. You're going to reap. If you don't faint. The season that you're looking for, God told me to tell you, is yours. Clap your hands. <laughs> Father, bless our minds in Jesus' name. Thank God. Come on, let's celebrate Pastor Reed as he comes just now. Still for love. Let us not grow weary in well doing. For in due season you will reap, you will receive if you do not faint. I think the lighting is bad on this. It's like I get dark when I'm down there. I am dark, but not that dark. Um, Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians chapter 6, he reminds us that we need not to grow weary because the issue is we do grow weary particularly in doing well. But he says this is crucial, the latter portion, as Bishop says, so crucial. You will receive, you will reap, if you don't lose heart, if you don't give up if you don't quit, if you don't call it a day, if you don't relent, if you don't surrender, if you don't back up, if you don't back off, if you don't retreat, if you don't run cowardly, no, endure, keep pressing, keep doing well in spite of the bad, in spite of the stress, in spite of the strain, in spite of that which causes you to want to relent. We can't be wimpish Christians. We have to be Christians that persevere. For those that have given up, for those that have relented, for those that have lost heart. God has a way of restoring your heart. He has a way of 
putting you back where you were and giving you that which you are lacking. So there may be somebody here this morning who has come to a point in their lives where you are saying, you know, I'm just weary. I'm exhausted. Life seems to be very difficult for me, hard on me. There's something happened last week, this week, not talking about the other weeks that are behind me, and it has just literally beaten me down. I got a good word for you this morning, that our God will meet you right where you are. And then he will raise you up to where you need to be. But you have to accept his means and his methods. In one, saving you, two, sanctifying you. If you're here this morning, we want to give you an invitation to meet this Christ who can save from the guttermost to the uttermost. If you're here, ma'am, you're here, sir. We all have been where you are. And it's not because we don't look like it. It's not because we may not appear to be or be able to relate to you. What you are looking at is a progress, a pattern of progression. He is making us better. He has made us better. And we trust that he's going to keep making us better. If you're here, ma'am, you're here, sir, and you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin, today is your day. Now is the acceptable time. We want to give you an invitation. If you're viewing with us, go to the sbc.org slash join. You need to know this Christ because this Christ already knows you. If you are one that have started with him and have relented, you've grown weary in well-doing. Now it's time for you to be restored back to where he started you off in and with. My sister, my brother, you don't have enough sin that God's grace cannot meet. You don't have enough misery that his mercy cannot extend to you. You don't have enough undoing that exhausts his patience and graciousness towards you. He wants you to be restored. Come back to the place that you walked away from, from the person you have walked away from. Today is your day. Now is the acceptable time. Or maybe you are a believer but you're not a belonging believer. Today is your day to be a part of a local assembly, a local family where you can grow, glow, and go. Today's your day. Whether it's salvation, restoration, church affiliation, we are opening the doors of your church, if you would, and we want you to be moved and respond to the specific calls that the Spirit of God is prompting, convicting you on. Is there one that I miss? Why don't you come? Today's your day. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Come on, come on. Savior. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Why don't you? Come on, come on, come on. Today's your day. Now is the appointed time. Why don't you come? Wow. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. God bless you, daughter. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Go meet her. Go meet her. Go meet her. Go meet her. Don't let her pay for it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Savior. Salvation. Restoration. Church affiliation. 
our viewers. Go to the sbc.org slash join. Click the proper property for you to become a part of, to meet the Savior, to be a part of, to be restored back to. Why don't you? Why don't you come? Is there another? 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 Come on, why don't you? Come on. Savior. Why don't you just hear? Let's give the Lord a hand to praise if you would. This morning, as we prepare ourselves to participate in an exciting time in the worship experience, and that is the time to give. Amen. 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 Uh, to you that are here, we want to uh, share with you our methodology of giving. You will find that there are two baskets that are in the front as well as in the rear of the sanctuary. And those two baskets have color codes on it. One basket is a basket with a yellow stripe around it that they are holding up now. That is where we give to the ministry of the church, where the church can continue to give ministry, amen, to not only one another, but to the world. This is what we give in. The second basket has a blue stripe around it, and that is where we give to senior pastor. Myself is where 30-something years ago I gave up my salary to put two other staff people on, and out of that, God prompted me to trust him for my living. I must confess to you that those many years ago, I did not take favor or was I obedient immediately when he told me to give up a guarantee. Uh, I, matter of fact, I, I got to the conclusion, or he brought me to the conclusion, where I had to do, or as they would say in the world, die. And my argument was, God, it's not that I don't trust you, I don't trust your people. That's what I said 30-some years ago, I'm not going to lie to you. And God responded to me and said, trust me for my people. And that's what I did over 30 something years ago. And I can promise you, I say this in declaration, I have had the privilege of not letting my family come short of not being able to do 